does a flip over the top of it. Oh, yeah. Veronica says, of course, I do this in my spare time all of the time. Nothing like some good old bull leaping, right? <laughs> all right. I'm glad some of you guys like the song. All right. It's a, it tends to be a favorite for a lot of kids. Although a lot of people always still like Stone Age. But now we are on to the Mycenaeans. We're going to discover these um, Minoan ruins, and they're going to be the ones who start coming up with these ideas about the Minoans. So for about 500 years, we're going to have the Mycenaeans um, completely ruling all of the Balkan Peninsula and the Peloponnesian Peninsula. They are going to be the main power in Greece. And by 1450, they're going to become the rulers of Crete as well. Um, we have the Trojan War set in here, and we do think the Trojan War really happened. Um, we think Greeks fought against uh, the people of Troy, um, not because we had a princess being stolen because, you know, goddesses go and casting love spells and things like that, but um, it was probably about trade. We see the My Mycenaeans declining around 1200, and they mysteriously abandoned cities. And we're going to have a period called the Dark Ages for Greece, um, between 11 and 800. Uh, like, like I said before, you don't have to write down these dates or anything. Like Just kind of give us an idea, the context of when these things are happening. Um, these Dark Ages are different than the Dark Ages of Europe that we'll talk about after the fall of the Western Roman Empire at the end of the year. So, the Mycenaeans. They were the first people to speak Greek, so therefore... They are their first Greeks. Makes sense, right? Your first Greek language. Then we go and say that they are Greek. And what they did was they built fortresses all over the Greek mainland. So we know that they definitely had some military power because they built big stone structures so that they could have their soldiers there so that they could go and be the rulers of the Greek mainland. Mycenae right here is going to be the largest of these fortresses. And we definitely know they were a military power because they hopped on boats and took over all of Crete, which had our Minoan society in there. So we have a lot of evidence showing that these guys were military very strong. Another thing that we're going to see about them is that they are going to set up what we call colonies all over northern Greece and crossing the Ionian Sea into Italy. So we're going to see colonies be set up in Greece and Italy by this. And so what a colony is, basically, um, Lexi go, goes and takes her boat over to Italy. So she's over here. She and Lance go over here. And then she says, all right, Lance, you're going to stay over in Italy and make a town. And you're going to go get a bunch of stuff from that town. And I'm going to come back every now and then. And then you're going to give it to me. Okay? So Lexi sets up a colony and goes and makes it so that she can go get goods from Lance from a different area. So what this does is it gives the people on the mainland new materials that they wouldn't have had, and it spreads out their culture and civilization. It's pretty cool. And so we see with between all of these colonies and the fact that they were really good at um, making ships that the Mycenaeans are going to be traders, just like the Minoans, and just like the later Greeks will be. So we'll see that this region is very conducive to being a merchant, to be making trades and doing lots of great deals that way. Like we said, during the Mycenaean times, we believe uh, this is when we had the Trojan War happening. Uh, once again, we believe it was over trade and not over, you know, Paris taking uh, Helen of Troy and then King Agamemnon going and getting angry and sending all these ships. We think there really might have been a King Agamemnon, though, which is pretty cool. Uh, and we think we have his death mask and all that, so pretty neat. Now, and we'll talk a little bit more about the Trojan War um, later on in the unit. Now, what we see, though, is we're going to start having invasions come. And what's going to happen around the 1200s, we're going to have different groups of people moving into the Balkan Peninsula and the Peloponnesian Peninsula. And they came looking for land, uh, and they are going to push the Mycenaeans out. They are going to attack, and 
instead of going and staying and fighting, many of the Mycenaeans are going to leave. Some going to Italy, and some going to Asia Minor over here, which we'll, we'll see in a map later on. And so after we have all of this war, it has something called the Dark Ages. Um, and you could probably shorten this whole idea. So after the Mycenaean civilization uh, fell, it was the Dark Ages for Greece, where we don't have a, um, a really strong uh, culture going on. We don't have um, the unified where the people are just starting to go in and um, they're just a new group of people in Greece. There's kind of a lot here. The big things to take away is the Mycenaeans controlled Greece. They were a strong military power that also did lots of trade, um, and they fell because of invaders. You could shorten it all up just like that. If you wanted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as I said, though, the Mycenaeans are going to be the first people to see these Minoan ruins. They're going to be the first people to go and try to be try to explain the things they saw. And one of the things they saw is at the Palace of Knossos, they had the labyrinth under the palace, and they're thinking, why would they have a maze? And like some of you said, you might want to have something dangerous in the maze to keep it from getting out. And that's where we have the story of the Minotaur. Now, there's a lot of different versions of the story. But the, the story goes mostly that Poseidon wanted to be worshipped. Poseidon, of course, was the Greek god of the sea. And Poseidon goes and says, you should make a sacrifice. To me and there was this beautiful um bull on the island and poseidon wanted that bull sacrificed but the king's wife thought the bull was so beautiful all she wanted to do is just watch the bull and they wouldn't sacrifice it to poseidon and so dun 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 when the queen gave birth to her baby it was half man half bull the minotaur now this of course is a monster uh even they had a hard time loving their baby but they couldn't they couldn't just kill their baby because it was their baby you know how it is um so instead of going and killing their monster baby they put the monster baby in a labyrinth and a you know big maze and like we said this monster was half man half bull and what happened is they um they said okay well how are we gonna how are we gonna feed this thing because the only thing the minotaur wanted to eat was human flesh yeah i know gross right so um mycenae had gone and uh, excuse me not mycenae the minoans had gone and conquered some areas and um one of the areas was athens and so as the story went every nine years they had to have seven uh when they say youths and maidens they say young boys young girls so kids basically um went from athens to kenosis to the labyrinth to be eaten by the minotaur they'd be thrown in the labyrinth then the minotaur would find them and eat them oh boy right <laughs> so they would go and send these kids to be eaten now, you have to remember, they come up with this because they're thinking, okay, why is there this maze under the palace? Why are all these pictures of bulls? Because they didn't realize that their favorite sport was bull leaping. They saw these bulls and thought, well, this is weird. How can we explain this? Now, this, of course, is going to end because there's going to be a hero, a guy named Theseus. He's going to be a, an Athenian prince. And he is going to hear about the Minotaur. He's going to hear about people are getting sacrificed and he winds up going and saving the day he goes um he offers himself up and then he winds up going and defeating the minotaur and then he you know he would have been lost in the cave but he winds up having a magic thread that winds up leading him to out um it's it's a really great story um and hopefully we can maybe 
thinking maybe on Friday we'll be able to for next week watch like a maybe a little bit movie about it. So that's our Minotaur. Here's what we believe the Citadel, the fortress at Mycenae look like. We see these big stone walls, all of this awesome buildings and everything like that. Here we see what it looks like today, the ruins, and this is what an artist rendition of what it would have looked like, which is pretty cool. I love seeing these ruins and then what the artists are able to do, deduce what the rest would look like. So they're going to have a lot of architectural, um, like really big things. Like So this is really cool. This is the Lion's Gate. And uh, it's broken off, but originally like lion's heads would be poking out of here. Uh, it'd be beautifully painted. Uh, but the fact um, that they have these openings like this, that was an architectural improvement. And um, having this kind of design was something new for architecture as well. I can't remember the exact name. Another cool thing they had is the Tholos. And this um, is the first example of a dome that anybody had ever made. And this is really cool. So what they would do is they would pile the bricks up at an angle, and then they would put earth on top to go kind of keep the pressure up. And so we have the first examples of domes being done by the Mycenaeans. Uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is what the tombs would look like. Uh, and these are what we call death masks. Uh, and basically when their kings would die, they would go um, have an impression of their face and put it over. Um, we don't know if it had to do with the afterlife or what exactly they were going for with it, but they would put these over the tombs of their kings. Or not the tombs, over like in the tombs, like, over the, the faces of the, the bodies. Ah, oops. <laughs> Go forward. I want to work. All right. It's just, once again, another picture showing how the Tholos worked. Pretty cool. People spend a lot of time on it. We see that they um, had a lot of beautiful art as well. And here's just a quick timeline of showing how the events happened. So we're mostly going to spend our time uh, over on this side with our Greeks, all right? So just real fast to sum up some of these uh, other ages with the Greeks. Um, the only thing you really need to know about the Dark Ages of Greeks is that... It, yeah, you don't actually have to write anything about this part down. You can skip this part. That's fine. I'm just trying to think of what's most important for you all, and I want us to have time to get the work done. Um, but so I do want you to know this, and then after the Dark Ages, we're going to see the Greeks having a common culture. So this is important. So we're going to see that pretty much everyone is going to go speak one language, Greek. We're going to have similar stories, myths, and religion. All right. So we're going to go and see that we have Greek culture formulating after our Dark Ages. Now what's interesting is, so they have this myth saying that, Helen had three sons. Now we know that this isn't true because we know it was different groups of people coming in at different times. But what happens is when the um, when we have our dark ages, when we have the Dorian invasion, we're going to then go and see that some people are going to leave and they're called Aeolians, and we're going to have some people going and leaving and they're going to be called Ionians. Uh, so altogether, these three different groups will eventually have that Greek culture. Um, but it's kind of interesting how, once again, mythology is to explain what happened. And they say, oh, well, there was a mother and she had three sons. And then, you know, one line are, are Aeolian Greeks, uh, which is why we call it Anatolia. Uh, one line is our Ionian Greeks. And then the other line is going to be our Dorian, which will be our main Greeks right here. Anyways, that's our notes for the day. I'm going to stop the recording. Do we have questions about this? This is kind of big.